DXB today as we celebrate our art in all its guises, all its forms. And of course, uh, the latest uh, uh, celebration uh, of Art Dubai uh, here in this great city. Uh, let's talk now to the co-founder of Dastan Goy, who is alongside us. You see, smiling, which is a good sign. <laughs> so straight away. Been working on that all afternoon. I, I love it. I love it. Amon Yan is alongside us. Thanks so much indeed for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Kind of you to join us as well. I know you were listening on intently to that. And I know it's something that you've been, you, you, you've seen as well. A, the power of art to to, 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 to sort of transform areas, to transform opinions. And that's something that you really believe in, isn't it? Because can art, can, can art come to sort of represent a country, a culture in a certain way? And does it need to be shook up into a certain degree? I think it, it kind of does. And it's also really important because art touches on so many different subjects and so many different kinds of people and really brings people together. And I think Benedetta very beautifully kind of uh, talked about that as how do you bring an ecosystem and how do you bring a society together? Like my background is not the arts whatsoever. I'm a finance background. Like yeah. My background is finance and investment banking. And yet here we are all talking about art and, and in a city which is really kind of pushing culture and art. And it's just, it's a way of showcasing different narratives that sometimes don't get spoken about yeah. um, by people that want to say something but don't know what kind of language they would like to use, whether it be painting, whether it be um, sculpture, whether it be fragrance, whether it be anything, uh, poetry. And in that regard, I think art can be a very powerful tool mm. to tell stories and to move conversations forward. Mm. So moving things forward and present day, you're uh, showcasing at Art Week, right? Yes. And Al Cal. Yes. Uh, what can we look forward to? What, what's there? So we, in collaboration with Al Cal and Art Week, and obviously the guys at Art Dubai, we have uh, a Pakistani artist who's exhibiting in Dubai for the first time with uh, with us, with Dastan Goy Gallery. Um, she is actually doing her master's in Finland at the moment. She's uh, she's a printmaker by trade, and so she's taken this idea of teaching children, which is uh, very important for her, where she used to create artworks for children with oil pastels. And she's combining those two mediums to really talk about different um, narratives that are really important to her, which are these utopic futures where she brings exotic animals, exotic plants and architecture together um, and showcases them in these vibrant, really, really beautiful kind of art pieces. Um, and that's what we have on display at the moment in El Cercal. And I have a question for you as well, because I saw that you guys are launching uh, a kind of open call for mm -hmm. a residency together with a UAE institution. So I'm curious to know how are you uh, imagining it to, this to work and how do you think that both languages will be coming together between Pakistan and the UAE? Okay. Um, yes, we have our open call at the moment. It's closing on the 10th of March. It's in partnership with Beit al-Mamzer. Mm. Um, we actually have a 14-acre vineyard in the heart of Islamabad in Pakistan, uh, which is where we've been doing residencies with artists from all over the world for the last four years. Uh, Pablo from Art Dubai is on our uh, advisory board, actually. And so this year, what we wanted to do was, because we moved back about a year and a half ago to Dubai, um, we really understand and saw the relationship between the UAE and Pakistan. And so the whole idea of Once Upon a Rain, which is the theme for this particular residency, was looking at the, the importance of rain, importance of water. In the UAE, I've grown up with cloud seeding. I remember the days when schools would be closed because there'd be enormous amounts of rain. And then living in Pakistan for the last two years and looking at the devastation that the rain and the glacial melts had caused in 2022 with the flash floods, it was really important for us to address um, rain. Mm. And also when you look at Pakistan or any country in the global south, majority of them, 50 to 80% of the population relies so much on water and precipitation because all of it is because of farming. Um, and that's where you get your produce and that's where society kind of, you know, um, establishes their, their way of living. So what we're really looking forward to is seeing what dialogue is created between the two countries when we send an artist from the UAE to Pakistan mm. and when they build relationships with the culture, with the people, with the land, and they really see what it is that they want to speak about. And the same thing goes vice versa. Having that experience from Pakistan and having that experience from the UAE and seeing what people are interested in and what water, precipitation and rain and these kinds of themes really mean to them. So it's open to all kinds of art uh, artists, mm -hmm. from visual to performance to um, sculpture. And it's, it's really interesting to see how people take a medium um, and, and kind of apply it to really reply to, uh, 
tune up and call into a particular kind of topic. And Matt, would you say this is what inspired you to launch, uh, you know, the line of scented candles that really tells the story of the global south? Yes. Um, so Dastangli and my personal background has been very different, right? Like I don't come from an art background, so my lived experience is very, very different. Um, fragrance, just like I was saying before, is another medium for me to tell a story. Yeah. Dastangui, at the essence of it, means to tell a story. That's what the name means, which is why it's very difficult to, to, to pronounce. <laughs> yeah. But uh, fragrance was an easy way for us to involve people in different stories. Um, the Global South, including India, Pakistan, Iran, Lebanon, UAE, all of these different countries. Um, the idea with the fragrances was that how can we really transport someone? Um, through the scent, through uh, a moment in time, through the warmth and happiness that that self-care moment kind of brings in. And that's what we wanted to do with the line of fragrance candles that, we're, uh, that we just launched. I know, because it is quite nostalgic, isn't it? There are only, in my opinion, two things that people a lot of the times have an emotional connection towards. Yeah. One is food, and the other thing is familiar scents from their country or their 100%. home or, you know, I don't know, their, their grandma's little cabinet. Uh, Imad, thank you so much for coming on thank the show. You. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, thank you for telling us yeah. about Dastan Goy. We'd like to wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Now, today's spotlight is on a community-driven art initiative helping artists achieve a positive impact through their work. This is Medha Nanda from Art Be A Part. I run a company called Art Be A Part. We are a company which is passionate about art and driven by purpose. We use art as a medium to create impact and to help causes. We're working with UNICEF India on a new project called SPARK. SPARK is a project which is art-based therapy for children of determination. We are trying to create funding for UNICEF to be able to go into villages, go into towns, go into the smaller cities which, who have no understanding of the requirement for these children. We want to create infrastructure, we want to help create awareness, not only for the child and for, for the parents, but also for the community. So we have, in our short span of two years, we have helped 55 artists, worked with 55 artists, sold over 60 artworks, and we have raised over a million dirhams for UNICEF India at the Bikers. Our short-term goal was to create a community of artists who worked with a cause, who were driven with passion. And uh, the long-term goal is to create a global community who is passionate, who's working towards creating impact, not only in their lives, but in the lives of people around. As you can see, there's a huge buzz in Dubai. Companies are moving here because Dubai has made it so inclusive. They, they welcome people and they welcome businesses. And I'm most happy to be working with Dubai Cares, who's been a great support and a great platform to work with, to create awareness and to create impact. A little insight into what Meta and all the team at Art Be A Part are doing to further the cause of art here in the region. Right, time now for the spotlight. Is it? No. Is it, it is, am it I is. pointing that way or am I pointing that, that way? That, <laughs> way, that, way. that way, am I? Let's put, should we it's both point me, that way? It's me, pick me, pick me. Yes, Tom, I have a sculpture for you. Commissioned by Dubai Culture in collaboration with Art Dubai, Union of Artists is the first permanent large-scale public sculpture of the Dubai Public Art Initiative. Embodying the collective spirit of five Emirati artists, this sculpture consists of seven pillars and is now on view at Al Hubeba Park for the first time at the public visuals. This is something that you are involved in heavily. Tell absolutely. us about it, Bernadette. Um, yeah, it is an absolutely thrilling and exciting moment. Um, I think what is really important to know about this process is that basically the five artists were shortlisted and then there was meant to be one winner and they span the generation. So you have from Mohammed Ahmed Ibrahim, who is the kind of father uh, of conceptual art in the UAE, all the way to the young generation, Asma Belamar, Afra al Dahari, Sheikh al Mazru, Khaled al Bana. And when we shortlisted them, they basically decided and requested to come together as a collective. They felt that this was a really unique opportunity for them 
to showcase the best of the UAE art scene in this very important and historic location um, in a work that will stand for a very, very long time, hopefully. And, and that is really what the work is about, about a scene that is maturing, but that is choosing to collaborate and come together as opposed to compete. That's so. extremely special. I love that because this is the thing, like, like for someone to like, give away their award and say, no, 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 l l everyone, everyone's mm -hmm. a winner. Let's just do it together. And, and, and for me, I've always wanted to see, like you see the architecture here and it's wonderful. Um, but now to have sculptures in public places, I think that is so needed. So it's wonderful. Absolutely. It's something that Ardmai has uh, sort of become it's a sort of synonymous with as well. So I, I've noticed in recent days, you know, just doing the rounds is up at Madinat, and a little installation has gone in up at Madinat. There's another installation down at DIFC at the moment. You start seeing those things, you go, hey, has something in there for a while? Have I just missed that? Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. Ardmai is just around the corner, yeah. etc. But it is sometimes, it sort of takes me back. Was it a few years ago that the, the, the painted um, camels started popping up uh, left, right, and said, and there was no big unveil or anything like that. It sort of happened overnight. And again, it just sparks that imagination. And I think that's part of part, it, prompting people to think a little bit further rather than sending out a press release and saying, this is what we're doing. Absolutely. But at the same time, it's about thinking, how do we make these things permanent? Yeah. Because examples you mentioned are great and they do show that the city is coming alive with art and culture, but we don't want it to be a one week a year yeah. thing. We want children to play by the sculpture, to engage with art and to start registering in their minds the idea that art is very much part of everyday life, that you don't need to go into a museum, that you don't need to be overly informed or cultured, you just need to be curious and it comes and meets you mm. where you are. So permanent installations. Absolutely. Yeah. It's fascinating because I understand nearly 250 applicants submitted their entries and only five artists were chosen. And the funny thing is that these five artists are actually friends and not just industry colleagues. And it's a remarkable project indeed, just to illustrate uh, the, the unity, the spirit of the UA. Benedetta, thank you so much. Please stick around. We're not done with you just yet. We're just going to run to break very quickly. Coming up, we are discussing visual practices in the region with Gulf Photo Plus. Plus, we're all set to create a magical experience with DJ Jeff from Sticknow Builds. So don't you go anywhere.